All right, welcome to Wise Up On Air. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, good to see you. Making your way into the queue and chat. Uh, give us a shout out if you're following along. And uh, yeah, looking forward to our exciting episode today, digging into deterministic music in the game De Vignuette with Megan Carnes. But first, we're going to do what we usually do here on Wise Up On Air. We're going to talk about some news. We're going to shine a light on the community spotlight, uh, folks in the community doing cool things with Wise. And then we'll get this show on the road. So cool. Good to see you in the chat, uh, Josie. Uh, and off we go. So first thing I wanted to talk about, we have had just a tremendous series of development diaries from the folks uh, working on the game Tell Me Why over the last few weeks. So everything from mixing, mastering, sound design, music, ambience, and voiceover, Dot Nod has brought to you and to the community just an incredible overview of their process. Um, we're talking the big picture grand scheme of the storytelling experience of Tell Me Why, all the way down to the nuts and bolts of you know, how they made decisions about uh, formatting their audio content, uh, mixing and mastering. Uh, and what's really cool about uh, these games and, and kind of from my experience, um, this we have a rich legacy of storytelling in games. Uh, this should go without saying. And, uh, and having worked on a bunch of Telltale games once upon a time, and of course the legacy of uh, LucasArts games through to their remasters as part of Double Fine, uh, there's just always such a rich sound fabric woven into these experiences. Uh, and really at the core of what makes them unique and special. And so to peel back the curtain and have these development diaries from the folks over there are fantastic. There's also a great talk coming up at GDC 2121. 2021? Yeah, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, if anyone's headed to that virtually or in person, uh, Definitely keep an eye out for that. It's called uh, Designing with Inclusivity. And it is a fantastic overview. Uh, Elise Baldwin will be presenting on that from Microsoft, who is a partner with Don't Nod in, uh, in the creation of uh, the audio. It's gonna be great. Uh, great team, great um, resources, great creativity. So uh, this is all on the Audio Kinetic blog. And quick tip off, uh, our guest today has also written a couple of blogs here for the interactive music system of Divinuet, which we're gonna go deep into here in just a few minutes. And this, the blog is really, uh, you know, from, for, and about, you know, the creative ways that people are using interactive and dynamic music and sound and it's, it's this knowledge share that we're really happy to help uh, channel to the community. And if you're doing cool stuff out there, we wanna hear from you, we wanna hear about it. And if there's an opportunity for us to bring that to a wider audience, uh, this, is, this is what Game Audio is. It is a, um, it is a bi-directional communication and, and we wanna be a part of that. So let us know if uh, you have some cool stuff coming out uh, using WISE or investigating the idea of interactive and dynamic sound. Uh, speaking of that, you know, in the age of video, we have a, a treasure trove, I think. We have invested in bringing these stories from developers about uh, the way that they're creating with sound dynamically in games. Uh, the most recent WISE tour uh, that happened this last fall is all online. Uh, and 
that we had an overarching theme this year of sound as storytelling. And that was a thread that ran through presentations from the folks um, at MiHoYo talking about Genshin Impact, uh, as well as the folks at Sucker Punch talking about Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, it rounded up in a panel discussion uh, with, with a bunch of great guests where we unpacked this idea of the different ways that sound can be used as storytelling. And, uh, and that's just uh, that's just the most recent Wise Tour. We have a whole uh, overview from countless developers, uh, everything from the folks at Skywalker Sound talking about their VR projects, uh, Crackdown 3, um, Call of Duty Mobile, um, the folks who did Control were talking about, um, you know, the music and breaking time in Quantum Break. Uh, the Witcher videos are fantastic if you're looking for an example of tying gameplay to music dynamically. Uh, could you do better than a masterclass from uh, Martin Stig Anderson on, on Inside? Uh, a, an example in games that um, I think we'll be referring back to for a long time. And it just goes on and on back to um, the folks at uh, Blizzard talking about Overwatch and uh, a game played with sound. So definitely dig into those resources. I think that the more we can understand the way that we're all working with sound and working with um, music in games and interactive experiences, um, yeah, the more fun that we can have pulling off cool tricks. Speaking of cool tricks, I want to mention uh, a recent initiative here at Audio Kinetic um, called Team Training. And this is an opportunity for you or your company or your audio team to leverage the vast knowledge base here at Audio Kinetic towards specialized training. So we will uh, custom customize a presentation, a discussion, and um, and give you the tools and understanding that you need in focused areas that are interesting to you. So if, uh, if a game you're working on is going to leverage HDR, um, maybe it's worth uh, dropping a line and having us uh, do some team training for you and your team just to help get you started and help you thinking about HDR and its application in your title in a specialized way. Uh, another great example of how to leverage team training might be uh, your QA team. Uh, equipping them with what they need to, you know, connect the profiler, uh, read through capture logs, and maybe help identify issues that they come across when they're QA testing the audio. This is something that team training can provide a specialized hands-on introduction to that and really skill your team up quickly uh, with those tools. So team training. Uh, again, access these all through the learning tab at audiokinetic.com, uh, either through the uh, videos, team training, or community blog section. Uh, audiokinetic.com is, is your, is your one-stop shop for that. Now I want to talk about something outside of the internet. Uh, is anything outside of the internet? I'm not sure. Uh, but specifically, I want to talk about the WISE launcher. So if you've downloaded WISE, you've used the WISE launcher to install a version or versions of WISE over time. And the WISE launcher helps you organize your projects and your different versions uh, and, yeah, makes sense of your wise lifestyle. Uh, a recent addition is that we've added the ability to take a survey tied to a specific version of wise. So if you've been using 2019.2 or the newest version 21.1, uh, you'll now have access to be able to take a survey about the features related to that version. So most recently, we'd be talking about uh, object-based audio. We're really interested in how people are starting to leverage that technology in their experiences. 
Uh, and we're looking for feedback. Uh, what do we need to do next? How can we keep improving this so that that technology becomes more accessible, easier to understand, and more creative for you uh, in your projects? Uh, looking backwards in time, uh, 2019.2 brought a ton of new features to profiling uh, with the filter toolbar for profiling. So again, we're looking for information or experiences with people as they as they continue using that version. And what's cool is, you know, these surveys were something that that we would uh, deliver bespoke on a regular basis, uh, gather feedback, and and with 2019 uh, too, we've already started to drive some of that feedback into the development of 21.1 and into future releases. So. We're really interested in trying to bring back your experience with WISE to help drive development. And now that's right in the launcher. So if you have some time, if you have some feelings about these versions, uh, please take the survey and uh, it's accessible through the WISE launcher, uh, either through a uh, pop-up here, um, or through the question mark icon related to an installed version of WISE at the bottom here. Take the survey. Uh, so cool. I hope y'all do that. Uh, I'm shifting gears. Uh, I want to talk Community Spotlight. And this month, it's pretty cool. The Sound Architect has released a podcast with Loic Colthier from Sony PlayStation Europe uh, on the game Returnal. And this is a deep dive into some of the processes of creating sounds for this game. Uh, he unpacks 3D audio and the different ways they, they used it. Uh, haptics has become a really exciting thing for audio to participate in the development of with audio being able to drive the motion in controllers, uh, certainly for years uh, within WISE and WISE Motion. But getting into the finer details now with the uh, DualSense controller uh, and how they leveraged it in the development of Returnal is really fascinating. Uh, again, with Sam Hughes uh, and the audio architect, this is uh, the sound architect. This is a, a series of podcasts that really just go deep into the passion and creativity behind uh, interactive sound. So I recommend it highly. It's a great listen and there's some really cool tricks in there. So hope folks can find that online. And with that, I would like to welcome Megan Carnes. Hey, Megan. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Oh, you bet. Um, it's uh, it's it's been a while since we have shared a live stream together. But once upon a time, uh, I was a guest on yours as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was like a year ago or more. Yeah, yeah. it was a while ago, but it was very fun. Yeah. yeah, well, and, and here we are again. Uh, I'm really excited to dig into the progress you've made since then on the game Divinuet that you've been working on. But give me a little bit of background first, if you would, on, on your pathway into uh, maybe composition or interactive um, music and audio and, uh, sure. and the arrival of Divinuet in your life. Yeah, um, so I grew up playing instruments. I played a violin and piano. And as soon as I realized um, I enjoyed writing music as well, I kind of decided I wanted to do that as a career. Um, and I started off mostly doing film music, but then maybe four or five years ago, I kind of uh, realized I would love to do games as well. and. Um, Basically, people told me to check out WISE, try to learn it, and I was just <laughs> fascinated by interactive audio and it, writing interactive music and how different it is than film scoring and that kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, I started making my own games kind of as a way to just uh, 
explore interactive music kind of on my own terms, I guess, like being able to experiment in whatever ways I wanted, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, and it, it kind of sounds like it unlocked a kind of expression in you because, again, I think as we'll see uh, digging into Da Vinuet, like we know that interactive music has, um, well, it has a tremendous amount of detail to it. Uh, in the same way that composition does. Uh, mm -hmm. And what you've unlocked with the combination of your ideas for interactive music and interactive composition and this, uh, you know, deterministic playback system that has manifested in Da Vinuet, I think is, uh, is it's a fantastic combination of that expression. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's been. Sorry. No, and so and so you you arrived at this place where you're you're stretching out, trying to feel feel out what's possible in this interactive space, and mm -hmm. and from that, just it became clear that well, you had to make your own game. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I made another game before called Interview. And it started off as just uh, me wanting to make a small demo for my website or something just to kind of prove that I could do interactive music. Um, but then I started really enjoying it and it turned into like a full fledged game. <laughs> so, and then as I enjoyed doing that so much that when I got the idea for Divinuet, I decided to make that as well. Awesome. Awesome, and, and, and it's been great to, to be a part of that development over time. You've done a series of live streams, uh, I think since inception, am I right? This is part of your process early on? Yeah, pretty much. I haven't been doing them as often lately, but yeah, um, early on, especially for like the composition part, um, I would stream that a lot. Yeah, yeah, I remember tuning in, and it's. I, I'm always fascinated by people's processes, and the results of that, of course, we experience as part of uh, games and, and interactive. Um, but, but watching it unfold in real time is really compelling these days. I'm glad, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very, very fun. Oh. I like watching other people do it too. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And so you're going along, you're in development, you're, uh, you're sharing this process with folks. And from that, uh, you decided to, uh, bring that to a, a publishing platform. So you did a, um, an Indiegogo campaign for it, uh, mm -hmm. and it, which resulted in a successful campaign that, that carries forward. Um, mm -hmm. Where are you at in that process? Like, bring us up to date with, with maybe um, what we're going to see today, uh, and what has uh, happened along the way uh, from that moment, from going kind of all in with the community on the creation of Divinuet. Yeah. So a lot of the funds I raised uh, with the Indiegogo, I used to hire like actual musicians, instrumentalists. So today you're gonna hear um, some guitar by my friend Matthew Lister and viola by Drew Ford. Um, and that is far as where I am in the process. Uh, my programmer, uh, Saul Luzzi, um, he's been helping me out a lot. And the game is at a point where most of the functionality is there. It still like needs some polish and such. Um, but at this point, I'm mostly just uh, still writing music, um, doing video stuff. It's basically at this point, mostly just getting the actual content into the game. Um, but yeah, you're going to see a, a version of the game. Um, it's still, you know, pretty early. But yeah, it's I'm excited to show it. <laughs> well, I remember tuning in and seeing, you know, wireframes wiggling around in conjunction with different, <laughs> uh, you know, music ideas that you were sketching out at the time. And, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm guessing it's come a long way since then. Uh, and mm -hmm. I can't wait to jump in. Where are we going to start? Uh, I'll start in Wise and kind of show you how everything is set up. 
Um, and then we will jump into showing you how everything looks in Unity and then a quick playthrough of one reading in the game. Awesome. Now, you just tipped it off there, but the setup is uh, this is a tarot uh, reading. Right. And would you like yeah. to, to explain it a little bit more detail? Yeah. So essentially, um, tarot, if anyone's unfamiliar, is essentially a deck of 78 cards. And you use it. Uh, some people use it as kind of like a fortune telling type thing, but I use it more for getting insight on situations. But basically, each of the 78 cards represents a different thing. And you do these spreads where each position that the cards can go in represent a different thing. Um, so maybe you do a reading with three cards where one represents the past, one represents the present, and one represents the future. So that's basically what Divinuet does. Um, and it's always three cards. Um, you can choose what each card represents. And then uh, each card or has its own little theme that plays during the reading phase where you find out what your cards are in here and little individual music theme for each one. And then after that, um, it goes into a kind of like music video section uh, where the cards kind of like combine to all make a piece of music together and then also like, generate a music video for you essentially. Awesome, and behind all of those um, choices that are happening on the game side. What's happening underneath, we're going to dig deeper into and wise here, uh, but essentially is, you know, deterministically composing along the way. Like the combination, the result of those three cards that are chosen uh, combines to make a, a, a synthesis of those three themes. Am I right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and I know Josie's excited to hear more Divinuet tunes, and uh, <laughs> and I think we are well on our way. So thanks for the setup. And uh, if anyone has questions uh, throughout the process, I'll try to carry those forward. And in the meantime, let's get started. OK. Um... Let me real quick. Okay, so basically, as I kind of mentioned before, the game is in two phases. We got the reading phase, and I was calling it the generative phase before, but eh, I don't know if that's truly accurate, but <laughs> it's it's close enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's some generation going on there under the hood. Yeah, um, so starting with the reading phase, uh, the first music you'll hear is what I call the interlude. And this is what's playing uh, between you finding out the card definitions. So this is made up of, whoop, it's uh, this repeating piano line. Got it. And then I've got random subtracts here of a high and low parts that can uh, play above or below it. So I will actually just play this so you can hear what that sounds like. Yeah, so that is essentially the in-between cards music. And yeah, you can hear that it's randomly picking. Um, high and low uh, parts to go along with that repeating piano line. I would definitely and call that, that generative. I'm glad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um, I'm not going to get super into the music theory of it, but this is basically, I talk a lot about how I composed this in that first uh, blog post that Damien mentioned. Yeah. Um, but essentially i'm using only a few notes so that it can transition nicely into like a couple different keys so i'm not having to write all the card themes in the same key because uh, that would get real old for me having to compose um, everything in the exact same key right <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i can uh maybe 
play one of the hard themes uh, and do it from the interlude to show uh, basically how the transition sounds. Um, but yeah, all of the card themes are composed just individually. So that's uh, one of the parts that's taking me the longest because I have to write 78 of these individual themes. It, so. Exactly, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, so, and, and that's, what, uh, that's what each of these um, music states are represented in the association editor R's, are those 78 cards. Yeah, yeah, I don't have all of them in here yet. But sure. yeah, you can see that uh, there. Yeah, each of these states is uh, connected to one of these playlists, each which is an individual card theme. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> so let me show you real quick. Um, and you probably noticed that I switched the state like very early on in the song um, from the high priestess to the after reading bed. And that's because I just have the transition set that it won't actually uh, start the after reading bed until we reach the exit queue of uh, whatever theme is playing. Got it, got it. So pulling out from that a bit, on the game side of things, you have this reading phase. And this is uh, this is a state that you're setting on the game side, uh, communicating mm -hmm. to the music system. And in that reading uh, state, you have a, a sub-state. So now you're during the reading, uh, and you have these different states that the game is setting based on how the gameplay is progressing. And by gameplay, I mean how the reading is progressing. Right, so yeah. from interlude, which is that uh, the book ending piece, to the to the card that is drawn by the game, uh, and then the mm -hmm. after reading, all leveraging the transitions in Wise to be able to get musically between each of those different game states. Yeah, exactly, and this will make more sense once I actually. Uh, show it in unity how it all works in the game but yeah cool. basically uh, when the interlude music is happening you're seeing like your physical reading with the cards on the table and then while the individual card theme is playing you're seeing the definition of whatever the current card is cool and the music sounds sublime i know that the fidelity oh, of the internet is not doing it it's justice uh, and <laughs> yeah and yet it still comes through loud and clear so oh thank nice you work. i'm glad thank you um so yeah um then after the reading phase uh we got uh three cards read then we're gonna transition over to the video phase or the generative phase and there is a little piece that plays in between uh just to smoothly transition between um, the reading most of them are in like b flat or e flat and then the generative music is in F. So we got a little, just a little transition, transition guy here. And yeah, it's just kind of a vamp thing. Um, and on screen then uh, there's like a little text that says like the cards have found your song or it's something along those lines. Um, 
So that's making then, making a musical bridge between yes between uh, between different key signatures between different sections of of song. Yeah, exactly. Um, just to make it smooth, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. And then we get into the generative, um, and so one thing to point out here is that there are different accompaniments and that is decided by whatever suit there is the most of in your reading so uh in tarot there are five suits there is the major arcana uh cups swords wands and pentacles and so we uh, eventually are going to have options for all of those and then plus one for if there's a no majority like if each of your three cards is a different suit um right now i only have the cups um but essentially, whoop, there's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> um, we start off with a little intro. That's only the accompaniment um, instruments. So for cups, it is piano and cello. Uh, yeah, just to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. um, so we start off with that. And this is all uh, open fourths and fifths, I'm pretty sure, because it can go into either major, minor, or Dorian. It's all F, but it can be, uh, you know, different keys. Got it. And then let me show you. So essentially, you see here it says cups one, cups two, and cups three. Um, each of these kind of represents the different cards. So in the first section, you kind of hear. Um, stuff mostly determined by the first card yep. although it'll always have this accompaniment running over it from whatever the majority suit is in your reading got it so let me show you all right let me zoom that out a little okay so we got the accompaniment here and you can see got two different major keys, or two different major uh, chord progressions, basically. And we got Dorian and minor. And so uh, this is determined also just by whatever your card is uh, in each position will be tied to a certain key. Yep, and those are mm -hmm. switch tracks, right? So you're setting, a, yes. you're setting a switch on the game side based on the, uh, yeah, based on the suit and card to be able to play the right layer at the right time. Yeah, exactly. And you can see that those are right here. Cool, cool. All right, that's the suit. Where's the key? There's the key. Okay. Got it, got it. Yeah, that's right there. And then um, we got our viola melody. Uh, basically, each little section has a viola part and a non-viola part that kind of trade melodies back and forth. Um, and you'll see I don't have everything done yet, but you'll see here that I have something called groups. Uh, basically, I've divided the cards into kind of 13 different kind of thematic groups uh, based on their meanings. So like all the super happy cards I put in one group, um, like this uh, group eight here is the ambitious ones. Group nine is the ones about like taking a break, resting, that kind of thing. and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, it'll choose the viola melody based on uh, whatever group your card is in. Cool. And then you'll see here I got different suits again with melodies. Um, and this is based on basically uh, whatever suit the current card in the position is. So this is the first card. So uh, like if it was swords, we would hear the swords melody. Mm -hmm. And let me, where am I looking? I don't remember exactly where I put it, but basically it mutes all of the other uh, melodies that aren't the suit that you want gotcha. so it would play yeah gotcha um 
Yep, that's probably yeah. in the States tab. Uh, oh, yeah, well, back on your track, the three orange bars for... Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there, okay, it is. there we go. Yeah, so you can see here, like, this is Major Arcana. Yeah. So basically, it's like, if the card one is the Major Arcana, um, you know, it's a normal volume. Yep. But then if it's any of the other suits, it's turned all the way down. Perfect. So that's how you're managing which layers of the system are heard at any give t given time based on yes. um, the cards that have been played. Yeah, exactly. And then you'll notice uh, all of these are also switch subtracts, and that's once again uh, based on that thematic group for which of these will play. Yeah, so it's it's a uh, a spider web of hierarchy, you know, that the game sends down to the music system, which results in this uh, combination of, you know, elements across all these different tracks that have been composed to play well together on uh, simultaneously, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Wow. That's, yeah. uh, and, yeah, and that's, a, a lot. that's a lot of combinations. <laughs> it is a lot of combinations. <laughs> it's a, a lot to keep track of and a lot to test. Yeah. But since I'm adding them like a couple at a time, I don't think it's as bad as, uh, you know, if I added them all at once and then had to just test them all. Yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. And then... So coming in from chat, great. Uh, it's sound, sounding great. Folks are... Uh, loving oh, the you. way it's coming through. There's a question about um, whether you've made the choice yet about whether you're streaming the music or loading it all into memory. Uh, is that something you've given some thought to? Um, I haven't really decided yet. I'm just kind of going to see what happens, like performance wise, and go from there. Perfect. <laughs> and, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a mountain to climb eventually, or a bridge to cross. It, it, it's not that daunting when you get there, yeah. right? And you make those choices yeah. for, for performance reasons. Um, and I think that's great. Flex, stay flexible yeah. to it. Um, and I know we'll get there eventually, but a question coming in about music events and how you're using, how you're using music events. So maybe when we get closer to the Unity side of things, um, we can touch on that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll actually show that in a minute. Cool. Um, yeah, so then um, it'll play the three sections. Let me show you, actually. Yeah, you can see in the playlist it plays intro, then one, two, three. And then I haven't written it yet, but there will be a little vamp again that kind of repeats until uh, the player decides whether they want to watch the video again or go to the credits. Um, Got it. So, yeah. so it plays through this uh, this generative piece that's determined by the game. At the end of it, you said there's an exit queue that then transitions out to um, the kind of interstitial music. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I would assume we move forward from there. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. And uh, right now, you see I only have the cups ones but eventually what i'm gonna do basically once this is done i'm just gonna copy it um change the uh name to major arcana yeah. wands or whatever and then replace the accompaniment uh stems basically so that i don't have to uh, do it all again oh yeah um yeah totally. <laughs> and yeah and that's a uh, switch track uh or a switch container based on whatever the majority of uh, cards is or suits Suit, is yeah, okay. reading. Okay, so I understand. Yeah. So the three cards that are played, you're saying will have some kind of majority suit that is that first, kind of the first big switch or state that gets flipped in the music system. And then from there yeah. you have a, a bunch of tiny little decisions that get made resulting in uh, the layers of the switch tracks that get played and heard. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I can actually, if you want, I can play one for you. Yes, please. Here. Okay. Um, so I gotta set all of these. Um, what did I just sign on? 
So this is if your reading was uh, the Seven of Pentacles, which is a card about uh, basically waiting um, after you put in some work. Sometimes you got to just be patient and wait for the fruits of your labor to uh, happen. <laughs> and then uh, your second card would be the Ace of Cups which is um the aces are kind of the cards in their purest forms and the cups are all about like emotions and relationships and that kind of thing so it's essentially like a card about um you know being really happy in your relationships and feeling all these good feelings and that kind of thing and then your third card uh would be the ten of cups which would be it's kind of the card about like feeling fulfilled in like your life that kind of thing um so ace of cups and ten of cups are kind of similar but the tens tend to be like about completion and reaching a goal that kind of thing and game stage is generative generative cup theme and uh, cups since that's all we have done and also this would be a cups majority reading your, your uh, game thing... stage said making some... oh my bad thank I'm you just double thank checking you. okay <laughs> and then so the first key the resting one is dorian <laughs> uh, and then we got the second major key and first major key for the next generative part main uh, real quick for the non-viola melodies, uh, the first one you're going to hear, uh, actually, let's do the swords. Uh, so we'll do the four of swords instead, which is also about like rest and taking a break. So you're going to hear a Wurlitzer for the first non-viola melody. Um, and then for the second two, you're going to hear piano, which is the one that are associated with the cups. Cool. And so I lost count while you were setting these states. But essentially, mm. these are all being driven by the game system that you'll show us later on the Unity side of things. So this, you know, setting all those here in WISE, it's really about the auditioning environment inside of WISE. You know, before mm -hmm. you're before you're programmatically determining these from the Unity side of things, you have your environment all set up. You've set all these states to get the the playback. Uh, circumstance that you want to hear and uh, mm -hmm. and now I think we're closer than ever to hearing the result <laughs> yeah I'm sorry this is all taking it's, so long to explain it's very convoluted no, <laughs> no it's uh, it's you're doing great it's valuable uh, to have this kind of depth and uh, and yeah so I, I think keep going keep going Okay, yeah, and I pulled up the playlist view so it'll have the little arrow that pops up when each section starts. Happy Joy card.
And so I don't have like the little vamp thing written yet, but that's what it'll go into now. As advertised though, happy and joy there at the end for sure. And <laughs> yeah. And uh and, and again, like had the the feeling and flow of a composed piece of music, but that's good to hear. as you showed <laughs> us, right, it is the the generative and deterministic composition uh, as a result of of the hand that you're dealt, and and I think that that's no small feat to make it sound comprehensive in that way. Yeah, thanks. And um, yeah, I purposely picked ones that would sound like very disparate, just to kind of show you the range of uh, things that it could sound like. But yeah, some of them will be like all laid back or all energetic, or it'll just really depend on your reading. Yeah. Uh, so a question from the chat. Were you a mm -hmm. huge uh, tarot fan uh, before you started the project? Uh, how, you know, has it been an exploration? Uh, have you gotten deeper now into it? Yeah, yes to all of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I started doing tarot in like, uh, I think 2016, somewhere around there, just like as a hobby. And I thought it was really interesting. And for a while, I was trying to figure out how to do something with music and tarot. Like the obvious idea that came up was an album, but um, obviously 78 like full on <laughs> tracks would be a lot. <laughs> so when I came up with this idea, I realized it was not only a way where I could get away with writing like 45 second tracks for each card, but also would kind of allow me to uh, explore what the music would sound like for all the cards combined for a reading. Um, well, and I, th and I think yeah. it's that surprise and delight piece that that must make it really interesting compositionally for you. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. imagining, you know, yes, it sounds daunting to just like sit down and write 78 pieces, right? <laughs> uh, however, as you're moving through that, I imagine that hearing those dynamic combinations um, must be really interesting. Yeah, it is. Um, it's really interesting what comes up. And yeah, to answer the other part of that question, uh, working on the game has definitely gotten me more into tarot because I really have to think about um, each of the cards and their meanings and how they combine in different ways. So going that in depth has definitely, yeah, I'm just a lot more into tarot in general now. Nice, nice. Uh, a bunch of great comments in the chat, a suggestion that maybe, um, playing this game as a live concert at some point in the future. Oh, that's a cool um, idea. Yeah, I have thought a little bit about how that would work. Um, I would have to like figure out the specifics, but yeah, I think that would be very, very fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, question about, was there a pickup note in a transition? Uh, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good catch, we some, yeah. We have some uh, ears on the stream today. <laughs> Thanks for that uh, note, and yeah, what does that even mean? Yeah, so essentially, uh, Viola, Viola, where are you? Sorry, <laughs> there oh, it is, great. okay. So this is where you heard the pickup note, it was for the third card, and um, you can see we got our entry queue here, and we got a little pre-entry going on here. Um, certain phrases sounded really abrupt if I would just uh, start them right on the beat basically. So yeah, some of them I did add a pickup and do as a pre-entry. And some of them, I don't know if it's any of the ones I played, but I would also add like a little bit of a post exit. Oh, this is the third one, so that doesn't count. Um, and the but yeah, I, the pre-entry and post-exit, again, these are cues that you can set on a per-segment basis that allow you to do that kind of, um, you know, start the playhead on time uh, and then sync it with uh, its transition time um, while, while having that kind of pickup note or on an exit cue to be able to play out that reverb tail on a segment. Um, mm -hmm while staying yeah, in sync. Exactly. And some, I would even have like one last note as the post exit just to kind of finish the phrase out. Um, nice. So yeah, I used uh, 
pre-entries and post exits a lot to kind of make it flow better, make it more musical. It's simple, effective, and masterful. It sounded great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think actually for the events, I think I'm gonna show them in Unity, which okay. I think I have to stop sharing for a minute. I don't yep. think it'll let me just switch. So one second. Yep, we got you covered. So thanks, <laughs> uh, folks in the chat for your questions. Uh, again, it's uh, we like these live streams to be uh, engaging for folks, and so I'm glad to to carry these questions back and forth uh, to Megan as part of the process. Uh, yeah, thanks for being here. All right, it yeah. looks like we've got Unity up and running. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So this is. You know, just kind of the game. But one thing I wanted to point out are these card data um, objects. My uh, programmer, Sol Lux Lutzi, uh, made these for me. And essentially, they are where all the data that is tied to a card lives. So we're not loading all the stuff for all the cards in the game. Um, it's essentially like if this card is one of the ones picked, then do these things. Gotcha. And, so and, we go. and we're looking at the moon right now and its properties, mm -hmm. the properties of that card on the right hand side. Yeah. So we got the picture that'll come up for it. We got the definitions. But I wanted to point out here, I have some wise events tied to it. Um, so we got. got it like the moon which is what plays its theme during the reading phase um and then we've got uh basically it's saying if it's card one uh the accompaniment for the generative phase will be minor same with card two and card three um and then we've got different thematic groups and that is done within the code um but basically um I don't know how to explain this without like getting super deep in the code, which I don't want to do. But um, basically, uh, it's saying like, hey, like if this uh, card is in this number th thematic group, then there are events. Um, boop, boop, boop. Which tied to each card uh, for each thematic group got it I can yeah <laughs> um and what we're looking yeah, at right yeah. now is the wise picker which presents the events from the wise project for you to navigate in unity yeah here it is okay so yeah basically it's like hey if card one is in group one then you're gonna set this event which is basically setting the state to you know group one and so on and so forth um Got it. But, so from the data uh, in the moon, uh, card, I, I can't remember what you call it, card data. Um, from the information yeah. that you store in that, then you're uh, firing the right or posting the right event to play back. Yeah, exactly. And we also got uh, videos stored in here that are saying like, you know, if, uh, if the second card is the moon then play this these two like the second or the third and fourth in the array or array that kind of thing yeah sure um yeah and i forgot to point out in wise but i had some markers in there um a bunch of them actually in the uh, generative music and that is actually what tells uh basically the music video to switch to a new clip um, gotcha I, and I, which clip it is i saw some of that fly by are you authoring those markers in uh in your music composition tools or are they custom cues that you drop in on the timeline in wise they're custom in wise got it so the unity is reading those custom cues looking for information to start and stop videos Mm -hmm. Got it. Got exactly. It. Yeah. And um, let me actually just, do you mind if I like play through a full reading? It'll take like. I wish you probably... would. This okay. is going to be awesome. awesome. Let me, yeah, I've got to turn off the debug stuff. Okay. 
And um, you'll hear like a forest ambience at the beginning. Um, I don't have it set up yet, but there will be like forest imagery and stuff uh, during the menu. Sh should we close our eyes during that part and just imagine frolicking deer and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, do it. Okay. And I have a specific reading chosen <laughs> because it's the one I have everything done for. Excellent. So this is where I'm putting in what each card represents, and we'll just do like a past, present, future thing, which is kind of the most common uh, three card reading. Okay. And yeah, this is all, it all looks pretty rough, but uh, functional. That's not what I wanted to do. No, not you. You. sense. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the 
little uh, bridge between uh, this section and the video section. Got it. And again, musical transition. Yes. Yes, that was the hope of the blood. Yes, so now the timing of all this is based on those uh, custom cues in Wise. result of the three cards. Yeah, and actually we're hearing the cups accompaniment uh, because I don't have any of the other ones done yet, but in the final game this accompaniment will be different since it's uh, all major arcana cards. It'll be the major arcana uh, majority accompaniment. that the music and videos kind of follow you know the flow of the reading like how it started with two sort of negative cards and then ends on a hopeful note um for this one in particular so yeah ah fantastic arc Thank on you. it uh <laughs> and again such clarity of personality i would say with for each of the cards uh in their initial composition right like <laughs> Like when the star hit, it was like, yeah, okay. And I'll circle back to this, but uh, you know, the guitars were called out in the chat, uh, the string beds, folks really loving the that instrumentation. Uh, awesome. And then of course, at the end, when you do come together with this unique combination, uh, you, I, I guess it's a song, right? It's a unique song as a result of these three cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what have you done the math? Seventy eight cards, uh, three cards as a combination. What's the total possible combinations at the end of this uh, game? I can't do math. I don't know. I'm sorry it's to a, ask you. It's to a do lot. Math. It's like <laughs> I haven't three times seventy eight, or something more incredible I've... because you take all the layers and the randomization into account. Yeah, I think it's. I, I took stats in high school. It's probably like some kind of like permutation <laughs> equation thing. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I haven't done the math. <laughs> One million, let's say. <laughs> yeah. Or something. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And so some questions coming in. Uh, again, a lot of love for the music uh, and, oh, and for you. the way that everything synced up. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Is the music driving the visuals? I know we talked about it from the point of view where the the video is kind of is um, using the music callback system to start and stop. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the cards up front? Is that mostly uh, driven by the user interaction when they click and the enter exit? Um, you know, 
sinking capacity in WISE, or or are you actually reading information from the WISE music system to present the right images for those cards? Um, the images for the cards live in the card data. Um, Got it. Yeah. So. so when those cards are determined by the system, uh, mm -hmm. visuals happen when they should, the event is posted, and everything stays uh, in sync through a combination of, you know, the way the WISE music system works uh, and how it transitions musically across um, beats, bars, and the grid. And then the mm -hmm. music callback system that you're leveraging, that you're reading on the Unity side to make sure that everything uh, flows visually as well. Yeah, and I'm not going to get into the code, but basically um, it's calling certain wise events at certain times, depending like when the player clicks and that kind of thing. Got it, got it. To help those transition progressions. And on that, uh, there's a, a question. Did you ever consider using non-musical sound ambiences for the postcard waiting moments? Um, yeah, I thought about it a little. Um, I played around even with just like throwing in that forest ambience from the menu just to see what it would sound like. Um, I found that it kind of took, at least for me, it kind of took me out of the headspace of the game um, a little bit like and so I decided that while the reading is happening I want there to be at least some kind of music all the way through it's a, a thread that you weave and want to maintain got it got it yeah and can you break the system like if you're uh, <laughs> you know if you're just constantly tapping uh, on the screen, uh, does does music still flow naturally? I would assume that, that the events you have in place are still gonna do the musical right thing, but uh, can you can you skip? Is that an option? Um, um, I do have a debug mode, uh, which I might put in the game or not, where you can skip like a reading. Um, uh, interesting. By like double clicking. Sure. Um, and that basically just kind of fades out the music and starts the interlude music again. Um, got it, got it. And, but basically, like, someone clicking a bunch of times is actually kind of... Um, basically, there are these different game states. And so, basically, the way it's determined is, like, if the person clicks and they're in this game state, then post this event and change the game state to the whatever the next one is. And then if they click again, it'll already be in the next game state, so it knows not to call the event again. Awesome. If that makes any sense. Oh. <laughs> you know, and, and it's fascinating to see, I will say, the lengths that you have gone to to kind of realize this um, musical vision. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to compose, it's another thing to compose with the idea of dynamism or interactivity in mind. <laughs> it's a step mm -hmm. further to make sure that all those layers, when you're making those choices, line up musically in in a pleasant way. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and behind the scenes, you have the system that you've built in order to kind of uh, puppeteer these different aspects of your composition and so it's it's a long way to go to to express yourself musically <laughs> uh, but the result yeah. is very unique and very uniquely mm -hmm. you so yeah thank you yeah i uh, the game is very much built around the music rather than the other way around so yes <laughs> right right uh what a joy thank you <laughs> Cool. Uh, you, I'm circling back to this because there were some call-outs uh, from the chat, from Josie. You know, the guitar sounded real. Uh, you had mentioned yeah. earlier on that you were able to, through the crowdfunding, hire in some um, composers, uh, uh, instrumentalists, musicians, to add to mm -hmm. uh, your compositions. You want to talk a bit about that process and, and maybe where we heard throughout the um, places where that, that that's been added? 
Yeah, for sure. So um, most of what's in the game is MIDI, but the guitar was uh, my friend Matthew Lister, um, and I knew specifically I wanted to hire him for this. So that was the theme for The Hanged Man. Um, and then all of the viola melodies you heard during the video phase uh, were my friend Drew Ford. Um, and so I think it was 39 different little clips I had him <laughs> record. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that was very cool of him to put up with that. <laughs> but yeah, having uh, the real viola there makes such a huge difference in how it sounds. Yeah. It's just so much more expressive and everything. You hear that time and again from composers who oftentimes are working in the box, synthesizers and samples, that really just bringing one live instrument or one element to that can can just help the whole thing gel or bring a kind of extra level of something something magical. yeah for sure and honestly since i'm only using a couple instrumentalists rather than having um you know a bunch of different instruments um, it makes the mixing and stuff easier because if you have a bunch of people who are all recording at home then you have to like account for all the different room tones and that kind of thing yeah. you know <laughs> um and different mic sounds that kind of thing but since basically uh with the like generative section it's only drew playing um it's a lot easier for me to just kind of mix that in with all the samples and such Right, because you're mixing this all yourself as well, uh, balancing the elements <laughs> and balancing them across the stems. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, there's, you've done quite a bit of work here, Megan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. Yeah. There's still a lot to do, but yes. <laughs> Without ca causing a panic attack then, what's next? What, uh, what's next up on your, uh, as part of your process? Um, so I want to kind of work on making the transitions between videos like a little bit smoother. Like you might have noticed that like the text will pop up maybe like half a second before the video changes, that kind of thing. Um, so I want to just smooth that out. And then honestly, just writing like a lot more music. Um, I still have a lot of the card themes to do and a lot of the generative stems and everything. So that's really the main thing I got to do is just get all the music into the game. Does, get it all done. Does it yeah. feel like though this uh, the work so far from my perspective has really established a kind of template? Uh, yeah. It feels like you have a comprehensive, well, clearly understanding of how things work, right? Mm -hmm. It was born from the music and from your passion for this. Uh, mm -hmm. So am I right in saying that at this point, you just need to compose for the system that you've created. Um, yeah. Okay. And yeah, definitely. Especially with like the stems for uh, the generative section because the viola is all done already. So I'm basically com uh, composing the other melodies to kind of play off the viola. Got it. Um, and then the accompaniments, there's like set chord progressions, set uh, tempo, everything like that. So. It's a lot easier um, to, you know, make it fit within those bounds than to have to compose something completely new each time for, you know, each different suit and that kind of thing. <laughs> you have your framework, uh, both musically and uh, interactively. And, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so now it, it can be about finding and blending those voices uh, and Pull, yeah, orchestrating, exactly. pulling them together in that context. So yeah, exactly. Awesome, awesome. Uh, <laughs> well, so we've got two blogs from you so far. Can we count on another one? Yes. <laughs> um, so the second blog I did uh, was based on an old system that I was using for the like generative slash video part of the game. And I ended up scrapping that completely and replacing it with the one I'm using now. So I want to do another blog that's kind of talking about why that first one didn't work out. Um, it ended up just not feeling very musical was essentially the problem. 
Um, so yeah, I want to talk about like why I scrapped that, why it didn't work and yeah. how I changed it and why I'm doing this instead. Well, and if that isn't the root of game development or just creative process <laughs> in a nutshell, I don't know what is. So uh, yeah, it would, absolutely. It would be great <laughs> to, uh, to get the kind of postmortem on that system. And, and we've heard the results today. They're fantastic. Um, Thank you. And, uh, and so where can folks uh, find out more about the game? Um, so I don't have an official website for the game or anything, but the Indiegogo page is still up and that's kind of where most of the info about the game is. And um, it's actually just if you go to divinuet.com, it'll take you to the Indiegogo. Um, there's a Divinuet Twitter, that's Divinuet Game. Um, and then I also post about it on my Twitter, which is just at Megan Composer. Um, but yeah, the Indiegogo kind of... Uh, lays out the most information about the game i guess great and um i also do monthly updates on there where i just kind of keep everyone up to date about how progress is going and that kind of thing great and folks can tune in there to get updates about your live streams when they happen as well or is that yeah somewhere else? Um, yeah um I don't do live streams super often anymore but uh when i do uh my twitch handle is I think it's Megan Composer. <laughs> it's been so long. Yeah, it's Megan Composer. Um, and or like I always tweet about my live streams before they happen too. Um, Great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And Josie dropped uh, the Divinuet game Twitter into the chat. We'll put it into the uh, well, thank you into the descriptions on the um, on the videos that'll stick around online for folks uh, when they circle back. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they'll be able to find you and Divinuet and continue to follow the process. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to keeping tabs on it over time. It's uh, a pleasure to see your process at play. And, and we are in a, a golden age of really being able to uh, see and, and in some ways participate in this kind of, um, you know, um, exposed creation, I guess, of sorts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's really fun to involve people in the process and show them what I'm doing. Um, I like being able to share that kind of knowledge because I know it helps me a lot just seeing other people do their stuff. 100%. Uh, and I think that's, that's what the, the wise up on air series is all about. So thank you so much yeah. for participating today, for bringing uh, your knowledge and your experience and, and unfolding this incredible music playback system rooted in your composition, so. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I, I'm always happy to share, share my stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, to the folks who rounded up in the chat, thanks for your great questions, insights, and feedback. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, Wise Up On Air. We do this pretty yeah. regular. Uh, come back again sometime. And as I mentioned in the beginning, there's just a ton of resources through AudioConnect.com. Uh, all of the Wise Up and Airs are there for you to dig back through. We've had some other fantastic guests. Uh, and just if you need to feed that head with this interactive audio experience, uh, we got you. So keep learning, keep being inspired, and thanks again. Bye. Thank you.